Hello everybody. What is Trotskyism? A complicated question, but I will try my best to give you an overview over the important parts. Essentially, Trotskyism is the ideology of Leon Trotsky, who was one of the leaders of the Russian Revolution in 1917 and one of the two most likely candidates to succeed Lenin, the other one being Stalin, who ended up ruling the USSR. To understand Trotskyism, you need to understand what it builds on, and that is both Marxism and Leninism. I went over this in that video already, but for the sake of making this video understandable on its own, I will briefly go over both of them again. Marxism essentially says that for a variety of reasons, our capitalist industrialized society is divided among class lines, with the working class being exploited and oppressed by the capitalist class. When the economy and society become industrialized enough, the workers will begin to overthrow the capitalists in a French Revolution-style takeover, after which they share everything and establish socialism. Leninism, on the other hand, recognizes the fact that in the country they were in, Russia in 1917, there was no large industrial workers' army to lead a revolution. So Lenin adapted Marxism to the reality he was experiencing. Now a party would be formed with all the people who are educated on Marx and they would lead a revolution and take over the state on behalf of the working class. They would then keep the revolution safe and develop the industry until the workers were educated enough to take over and reach socialism. Trotsky was a revolutionary along with other Bolsheviks. He was a strong supporter of Lenin and not a fan of Stalin. When Stalin came to power in the Soviet Union, Trotsky began to criticize everything Stalin was doing. Eventually Stalin would exile Trotsky, who ended up in Mexico, where his ideas cemented and he formulated his beliefs in the ideology of Trotskyism. Trotsky was also assassinated on the order of Stalin a few years later. Also, there are people who say Lenin wanted Trotsky to take over instead of Stalin, but this is based on the Lenin Testament, which historians aren't even sure if it's real. Either way, because Trotsky was still a socialist revolutionary while living outside the USSR, he handily held a lot of speeches talking to people, so he made a five-step explanation of what his ideology is supposed to be. Trotskyism is an evolution of Leninism, which itself is an evolution of Marxism. That's why I summed up both of those systems before. Trotskyism keeps the belief in a vanguard party. The logic is that the people in non-industrial countries can't lead their own revolution because they lack the experiences of an industrial working class and the understanding of Marxist theory, so the party does it instead. Trotsky supported the council system of the early USSR. Essentially, all workers in one job and in one region would form a council called a Soviet, which would send representatives to parliament. I have a video that goes in depth about the democratic system of the USSR and how it changed over time. This is of course a democratic system, but the people who stood for election had to be members of the communist party. The idea was that this way only workers and educated Marxists could be elected, because if they allowed the people to vote for capitalist populist parties, then they may lose the one socialist country in the world. This was justified as a dictatorship of the proletariat. According to Trotsky, these are the five points which set his ideology apart from other Marxist theories. Let's go over them and what they mean one by one. Support for the strategy of permanent revolution in opposition to the two-stage theory of his opponents. So, the two-stage theory says that to achieve communism you need a lot of industry. Farmers can't reach communism because the productivity is too low to create superabundance, in which there is so much of everything that nobody has to work. And the two-stage theory says that to get this industry you need capitalism. Marxists are perfectly willing to acknowledge that capitalism can build highly productive industry very quickly and efficiently. For this reason, some of them believe that a practically feudalist nation like Russia in 1917 could not reach socialism without first having capitalism. So the two stages are, first wait for a capitalist revolution, then let the capitalists build up all the industry, 
which has the side effect of creating an industrial workforce, which is needed for a revolution according to some Marxist ideologies. And then stage two is the workers seizing the means of production and reaching socialism and eventually communism. And this is the theory Trotsky opposed. Instead, he supported permanent revolution, which is supposed to explain how societies without large-scale capitalist industry can still reach socialism. Essentially, the industrial workers should ally with the peasantry and take over the state. They would then use their power over the state to create the industry needed for socialism. This is pretty much Leninism, but instead of saying that an educated elite seizes power, they say it's workers seizing power. Those workers just happen to all be educated on Marx. Note that Trotsky considered Lenin's revolution to fit that description. So the distinction is that under Leninism a party of educated intellectuals takes power, while in Trotskyism it's supposed to be the workers directly taking power. Of course, in praxis they look the same, since you have a party seizing the state either way. The next feature of Trotskyism is criticism of the post-1924 leadership of the Soviet Union, analysis of its features, and after 1933 also support for a political revolution in the Soviet Union and in what Trotsky termed the degenerate workers state. So as I said before, Trotsky really didn't like Stalin. Every time Stalin did something, Trotsky would write an angry newspaper article. Interestingly, Trotsky barely ever opposed Stalin's goals. He always just criticized the way they were implemented. For example, both Stalin and Trotsky wanted a large army to defend the revolution. Trotsky had a big problem with the central bureaucracy that had formed in the USSR. He would have preferred a more decentral system. Trotsky behaved kind of like an opposition leader. It's like he would say, I would do the exact same thing, but in a slightly different way. Which is why Stalinists usually think Trotsky was just trying to split the Socialist Party, which would destabilize the USSR, aka the only living socialist nation. Trotsky advocating a revolution against the government of the USSR was eventually deemed such a security risk to the Soviet state that the NKVD assassinated him. The next point is support for social revolution in the advanced capitalist countries through working class mass action. This means he wanted the workers of industrialized countries to all rise up as well, not just have one revolution in one country and spread the revolution via war or example, like under Stalin's socialism in one country, but to have uprisings in every single nation to bring forth international socialism. The next point cements this further, support for proletarian internationalism. This was the idea that a country without industry could have a socialist revolution, but that they needed to quickly expand and take over an industrialized society. These countries may not be able to reach socialism on their own, so a global revolution has to occur, which is followed by international solidarity and industrialized nations supporting the less developed ones. The last thing on Trotsky's list is use of transnational programs of demands that bridge between the daily struggles of the working class and the maximal ideas of the socialist transformation of society. This is based on the fact that workers may mostly be interested in getting food rather than reaching socialism in a few years. Stalin allegedly had farmers forcibly move to factories to fuel his industrialization plan. This was in line with reaching socialism, but not in the interests of the people this allegedly happened to. The party slash workers who are in charge should not only focus on building socialism, but also on the direct practical struggles of the workers. So that's Trotskyism according to Trotsky. There are many other things to be said, but for the sake of time I will only tell you about the fourth international. The International was a meeting of all socialists and anarchists to discuss their plans. Fun fact, the rift between authoritarian and libertarian leftists got started in the first International, which was so long ago that Marx went there personally. The third International was led by the USSR, meaning Stalin. 
their goal was to take over capitalist countries and forming one big world republic, essentially a USSR but with more Soviet republics in it. Trotsky considered the Third International to be useless, both because he disagreed with the idea of socialism in one country and partially because Stalin was kinda in charge of it. And Trotsky did not like Stalin. So Trotsky made his own international, called the Fourth International. This one was focused on reaching socialism via international revolution, as well as some more of Trotsky's ideas. The USSR refused to recognize this international and the NKVD hunted down its members. And of course the secret police in capitalist societies also hunted down Trotskyists. The unique thing about Trotskyism is that it's an ideology which never achieved anything. They never started a revolution or seized a government. But despite that, many people today are Trotskyists. And I believe it's in part because of what could have been. It's very possible that after Lenin's death, Trotsky may have become the leader of the USSR and implemented his ideas of the international revolution. And of course, Trotsky criticized every mistake Stalin made. So it's easy to imagine Trotsky as a better version of Stalin. Of course, oftentimes his criticism was empty and he didn't even say what Stalin should have done instead. I kind of want to go tanky and saying that running a country is probably harder than it looks. So Stalin having to rule a country may have a harder time doing so than Trotsky had in criticizing everything. And that's really all I had to say about that. Thanks for watching everybody. Did you know that none of my videos have ads on them? Probably not because three quarters of you are using an ad block, but whatever. It's because I don't like ads. But of course that means that my only income via YouTube comes from Patreon. So please consider donating. Also share this video with your Stalinist or Trotskyist friends so they may yell at me in the comment section for some minor mistake I made because I'm a person and not perfect. Bye bye.